So I found this thing on um Pin- oh shit. I found this thing on Pinterest and it um it was in regards to the 12 laws of karma. Now, this isn't anything new, but like it's just something I wanted to bring up, okay? So it says the 12 laws of karma. So first of all, the 12 different laws of karma are the great law, which it says whatever we put in the universe will come back to us. Then we have the law of humility, which says one must accept something in order to change it. The law of responsibility. We must take responsibility for what it is in our lives. The law of focus. We cannot think of two different things at one time. The law of here and now. We cannot be present if we are looking backward. The law of patience and reward. The most valuable reward requires persistence. The law of creation. Life does not happen by itself. We need to make it happen. The law of growth. We will, we, when we change ourselves, our lives change too. The law of connection. The past, the present, the future are all connected. The law of giving and hospitality. Our behavior should match our thoughts and actions. The law of change. History repeats itself until we learn from it and we change our path. The law of significance and inspiration. Rewards are a result of the the energy and effort we put in. Now, this is going to sound very, 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 very far-fetched. Okay? I'm not going to lie. It's This is going to sound very far-fetched. But why do I feel like this adds up to each month? Why do I feel like this adds up to each season? I just think about it. Aries is the great law. Whatever we put in comes back comes back to us. Then it made me go. So I went I went down it like this, like like this, like this, right? And this is not right, but I know this is very far fetched. But I don't know. Hear me out. So because as I was reading this, it was like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So right now we're in. We're in nine, right? And we're in the ninth house of like exploration, Sagittarius energy, Jupiter expansion, all that stuff like that, right? The law of connection says, no, sorry. No, hold on. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, the law of connection. It says, um, exactly, there's a lesson for each season, right? So boom. So the law of connection says the past, the present, and the future all are connected. Okay. Now, when we look at the ninth house and what the ninth house is, first of all, the ninth house is, um, I got to get specific words. Hold on. The ninth house is the house of evolution. The ninth house is literally the, the last house of what love is, right? And so if if it's the law of connection and the past, the present, and the future all are connected, love would be the only thing that keeps them in the same. Like, love would be the only thing that gets you from the past to the present, from the present to the future. Longevity, obedience, vitality, evolution. That would be the only thing, right? Right? Yeah. So then, you know, the ninth house says higher education, communication, spirituality, philosophy, ideas, and travel. You know, you know when you dream certain things, you astral project. Okay, and then like you know, in your dreams you be traveling other shit. Well, is that the same thing as astral project? I don't know because sometimes I be put in situations, but I feel like I'm there and I'm not like I'm outside my body. But then sometimes I feel like I'm inside my body. I don't know. That don't matter. Then I think about the connection between all things when we sit and we process how things happen, why they happen, who they happen with, and what we needed to change. So connecting the past the past situations to the present emotions to the future expectations is that that you know what i'm saying that sounds like some philosophy shit you know what i mean like that sound that sound like some 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 real like high class shit right there you know what i mean cuz then cuz then i started thinking of the 10th house okay so the 10th one would be the law of giving and hospitality. If Capricorn is all about the um all about the reputation and all that shit, like it says the law of giving and hospitality. It says our behavior should match our thoughts and our actions. My reputation is a reflection of my relationship with God, right? Cuz then the 10th house is to break down the words of the 10th house, it says it's the house of responsibility. Career and how we are seen in the world, recognition. I just find that to be very interesting.
that's your sante. Because then the the eleventh house, and you know your tenth house is your midhaven. Your midhaven is how you show up to the world, how the world sees you. It, it, it's like, you know, and I just find that to be very interesting because because um, Capricorn, I mean Sagittarius, is the last part of the conscious you. So like. We have a, a I like we have a conscious of like an I thing and then like I and then you. Okay, wait. Hold on. Let me make sure I understand that. Like okay. Everything that's a part of I is a reflection of you. Okay? And everything that is a part of a reflection of you is a reflection of I. So meaning that when people don't like when the you doesn't resonate with the I that's when it got to go. Okay. And I know they say things like we are all a reflection of each other, which I agree, but you're a part of a reflection that I don't resonate with. So you don't resonate with me. Right. And Sagittarius is the last house of the conscious you. So these are things where we are expanding our mind to say, this is either a part of me or it's not. And if love is the is the thing that goes from from past, present and future and the past mistakes get you the present emotions for the future expectations, the future expectations would be normally to be more happy, more peaceful, more freedom, um more money, more success, like uh more laughs. That would be the future expectations. And I know we shouldn't expect things in life, but those are the things we should expect because that would be considered a standard. Because if it, if the future goes to the past, that means that the reason why you expect those things now because of the past past situations that are no longer resonating with the present emotions. You dig what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like these are the type of high conversations I be on. And I feel like people on my same frequency, they see what I'm saying. Cause that, that makes sense because then we're about to move because, because remember how I was telling y'all the first through the sixth house is all spiritual and the seventh through the 12th house is all physical. It says, it says the, the, oh shit, the seventh, come on, stop fucking playing with me. The seventh through the twelfth is individual, and the the first through the sixth is collective. Collectively, spiritually, we are all aligned. Individually, we are physically our own person. They're fucking crazy. They're fucking crazy. That is fucking crazy right there, bro. Thank you. No, that's fucking crazy. And so, if you think about it. If the 10th and the 12th house are the being, okay, it's the conscious self-formulation, self-realization. And, and, and it's a, and this is on the, the part, this is part of the spectrum of the I. I don't fuck with that or you, you see what I'm saying? Go to Pinterest. Go to Pinterest. Go to Pinterest. It's on my Pinterest board. Go to go to, go to my buy, go to my link on my go to my website and go to come learn with OG. It'll take you straight to this board. But look at that shit. And then it makes sense of as we go through the ninth house, how we get more into this. We we click into this from the thinking to the being. So where we think about being a better woman, a better man, a better friend, a better a better uh, coworker, a better entrepreneur, better money, bigger smiles, healthier bodies. All of a sudden, we 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 transition to it being. So then, as we transition into an it being, then it comes through. Then it comes to the the um. Then it comes to the, the last three of the laws, which would be the law of giving and hospitality being. So if you want to be a better wife, a better person, that means you normally are better to others. OK, and then when when you when you start to, that reputation, you, your reputation, you would want to be known as a caring person, a loving person, an inspirational person. So once you once you've kind of got comfortable in your being, you've reached the midpoint of 
the law of change. So you logically can pinpoint where the, what parts of the being now can you proceed and that you need to fall back on. So you can say you want to be a better woman, but now you, instead of you being a better woman to be stronger, you're being a better woman to kind of go against your morals and values because you felt like this was a better being for you. Being a better woman doesn't mean that you you throw your standards down to the riverside. I don't that didn't say that in the Bible. It don't say that in the Bible. It don't say that in the Bible. Because see, it says here the law of change, history repeats itself until we learn from it and change our path. Now, let's go back to Sagittarius. Because they're both they're both that energy now, okay? In between the law of change and the law of connection, there's the law of giving and hospitality. Between the law of connection and between the law of change, there is the higher the higher perspective and it's the logical mindset. Like-minded people are in the same category. So where you've expanded your, your environment, where you've expanded your energy, you now go into this thing of like, okay, well, this is my reputation. And then you go into this logical thing. Well, these people don't add value to the mindset of what I'm trying to be. So instead of you being around a whole bunch of pick me weird ass bitches because they're wives, just because they're wives don't make them better women. Cause a lot of them women is only married because that's who they could marry. <laughs> Thank you. So then you get down to this thing, you know what I'm saying? That, you know what I'm saying, with history repeating itself, which brings us back to the law of connection of the, the past situations with the present emotions, with the future expectations, and then ending off the whole thing of that comes the law of significance and inspiration. Rewards are a result of the energy and effort we put in. Going based off the 12th house meaning, the words of the 12th house are... It's the, it's the law, I mean, it's the house of transcendence, secrets, karma, dreams, what we keep hidden from ourselves, past lives and spiritual life. The ninth house and the 12th house have this resemblance because for one, they're both the last houses and they both are the spirituality. That's why it's as above, so below. So if you've already handled all the spiritual stuff from the first to the sixth, that means physically your spirit is now comfortable in the physical form. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> My inner child be lighting up about shit like this because it's like, Hell yeah, that's cool. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. That is crazy. That is crazy. Oh my God. <laughs> that is so crazy. Oh my goodness. Y'all, my inner child just be having a ball. Because, like, that shit crazy. Because then the key words for Sagittarius are, I seek and I see. So what, what was the affirmation? If I see it with my eyes, that means it's something I'm supposed to do. The words for Capricorn is, I use. Come on now. Come on now. Oh my gosh. That is so crazy. Cause then the the keywords for Aquarius season is I know. See, that's why the age of Aquarius and the North Node of Taurus are very contradicting because Aquarius think that they know and Taurus are a I have. So that's why I kept trying to tell people that there was a lot of speaking out of context. Because you think you have the knowledge, which makes you feel like you know the knowledge, and it's all a lie. <laughs> you think you have the sauce, which makes you feel like you know the sauce, and that's a lie. You know, what I realized is, what, you, what I realized with the age of Aquarius and the North Node of Taurus, you have to know to have. And don't let that go over your heads because you have to know to have. You have to know that you're a boss to have, like, 
Wait, oh, wait, am I saying it backwards? No, sorry, it's backwards. You have to have to know. Thank you. Sorry. The North Node in Taurus, see, the age of Aquarius rules the entire energy. And since the North Node is only a time period, you have to have to know. You have to have boss qualities in order to know you're a boss. See, that was the thing about it is since we're in the age of Aquarius, a lot of people swore that they knew, you know, they I know this and they don't have that. I know I'm a wife, but you don't have wife qualities. I know I'm a husband, but you don't have husband qualities. I know I'm a good friend, but you don't have good friend qualities. You don't have it. You have to have to know. I have wife material. I have wife qualities, so I know I'm a wife. <laughs> I have good friend qualities, so I know I'm a good friend. I have boss mentality, so I know I'm a boss. I have leadership skills, so I know I'm a leader. You get what I'm trying to say? You have the um, ability to teach. So you're, I, I know I'm a teacher. And to have... Mm, let me not, because baby, I'm tearing it up. I'm tearing it up. See, because the second house says ways of earning and managing money, things valued more than money, beliefs that create or block abundance. See, that was the part of people didn't realize about the second house. It says beliefs that create or block abundance. So if you have those qualities, that means that you can, you have the beliefs to create abundance. But if you don't, if you have the qualities of a leech, that means that you have the beliefs to block abundance. If you have the qualities of, of codependency, then you have, then you know you have the beliefs to block abundance. Mm. This is crazy. That's why the key words for Gemini says, I think. See, where people are showing their actions these days and where people are showing what they, like, however people are showing their ass, it's because they think that that's the truth. That's why I told y'all Geminis are simple minded because they, if they don't think with both twins, that means what they think that one twin is the truth. And that's that's not the truth. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. That's why there's been a lot of contradiction energy. And that's why I said any type of miscommunication, misinterpretation, anything that was missed comes from a contradiction. Because I think this is also interesting. I'm trying to tell you, you got to get into this work notes board on Pinterest. You know, a lot of y'all will go down a whole rabbit hole on this bitch, okay? Because I pin like things that I feel were helpful for you, okay? And now that I'm looking at my own fucking board right now, this is crazy. Because... I think about the, the, I think about the, um, I think about the chakras that we are working on right now, which is the third eye, the throat and the heart. It says a blocked heart chakra says a lack of empathy, bitter, hateful, trust issues and intolerant. A blocked third eye, I mean, excuse me, a blocked throat is can't express self or speak out, misunderstood, secretive, not a good listener. Remember my ears were itching. I told y'all Sagittarius, don't fucking listen. Get get it out your get it out your ear. You know, irritate get that itch out. Then the third eye block says poor judgment, lacks focus, poor imagination, and cannot see beyond the physical. Now, if a block third eye is that you can't see beyond the physical, how do you think you would be able to make it in the season of where it's high philosophy and higher education and spirituality? Come on, somebody. This is crazy. When that, when these, okay, so look, we, we, we know how these things are when they're balanced. So that doesn't matter right now. Let's talk about the blocked and overreactive because this is going to come full circle right now because I find this very interesting, very interesting. You know what? I actually might put this on YouTube as like a little bit of a a one-on-one -on -one type of thing of like uh, some real nigga shit. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like OG speaks. I don't know because this is crazy. Just listen. An overreactive heart chakra is jealous, codependent, self-sacrificing, and they give too much. Now, let's go back to the laws. K 
Capricorn's little thing that I feel, okay, that I feel was the law of giving and hospitality. In an overreactive heart chakra. And I told Capricorn, I've been telling Capricorns all year, every reading, you can go back to any reading I've ever done for Capricorn. I've always told them, you, you need to open your heart. You need to open your heart. You need to open your heart. You need to work on your heart chakra. I told Capricorns that, that this entire year of 2022, because Pluto was in Capricorn and that was trying to transform the deep wounds of why you didn't love yourself. We got love at the end of the reading today. Love beats all. Love conquers all. OG, you never thought about locking your hair out of the subject. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I don't, I don't play those type of games. No, ma'am. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. I thought about it, and at the very moment I thought about it, I said no. Okay? These were only done because I talked to y'all through live. If y'all wasn't on live, I probably would have never did this bit shit. That's the only reason it came out because I was focused. I was focused on preaching. That's the only reason. That's the only reason I did my hair because I was talking. If I didn't do, if I wasn't talking to y'all that day that I was doing my hair, I would have sit here with a whole damn afro, and I would have just did not did nothing to my head. I'm doing this so I could do um, another twist out. Because I'm going to be a natural baddie for a couple of days, okay? I'm trying my best to be versatile just in case my husband catches me on a natural day. Just in case. So he doesn't see me look like a bird's nest, okay? Now, like I was saying, the giving and hospitality, it says our behavior should match our thoughts and actions, right? And if you, if you think about an overreactive heart being jealous, normally it comes from a contradiction, Mm hmm. And when we think about an overreactive, an overreactive throat chakra is opinionated, loud, critical, gossipy, yell and or talks over others in harsh words. That's why the mouth speaks to what the heart is full of. And an overreactive third eye is nightmares, delusions, hallucinations, obsessive and sees too many spirits. I was telling them a lot of Scorpios don't sleep at night because they demons be eating their ass up. Anybody that twitch in their sleep, talk crazy in their sleep. I told a lot of people that work overnight is because they can't sleep at night because of the demons that they have. They have to sleep during the day because it's light outside. It's bright. Darkness brings dark spirits. You can't see. Only thing that's there is the moon. So therefore, the, 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 the key word that I feel was funny was hallucinations. Too many spirits obsessive so anybody that's jealous normally has an obsessive energy that's why i said in scorpio season y'all were going to see people that was obsessed with you energetically physically what however emotionally they were just obsessed with you but their obsession came from a sense of envy and jealousy which actually came from a unresolved uh unresolved um feeling of why did they love you so much this is crazy. Ooh, this is crazy. This is the type of conversations I be trying to have. You dig what I'm trying to say? Because shit like this get me to thinking. Shit like this get me excited. Okay? Because when you go into depth about these things, you realize that, you know, you know what I realize is? The deeper I get into my words and the deeper I get into my teachings and the more I share, the more y'all are prepared for the people out there. Now that, now that, now that's a gift from God. Now that's a gift from God. The more I get, the more I, you know, cause I got a very amazing mindset. You know, the way my mind really works, it's, 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 it's a gift from God. I have to give God the gift because the way my mind works and the way the words are formulated in my head to be, you know, to, to me to speak, it's just like, it prepares. I realize that it's, it's really preparing you for war. It's really preparing you for war. This, this type of information prepares you for war. For real. And it's a war out here. Okay? These motherfuckers is crazy. Okay? They not coming in, in, they not coming in the regular uh, uh, meat suits that they used to no more. Child, they is shape-shifting. The Lord, you know, you know, some things I don't talk about. But the Lord is really getting me to start bringing up the word shape-shifting. Starting, starting, starting now 
from from the time that Neptune went retrograde, this is where that shape shifting thing is gonna happen. I don't know if y'all remember, but it was a season where I was saying how you was gonna look at people's face and their face was gonna look one way, and then the next thing you look, it was like it was gonna look different. Like they face look different. Like, damn, why your face look like, babe? You all right? You good? They like, oh, what you talking about? You like. Why your face look like that? Hmm. Hmm. A little different. How the fuck you look like that? Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, no, no, no. I feel like, I feel like young boy. Oh, no, no, no. Mm-hmm. Mhm. Mm I'm trying to tell y'all, and we about to have a um, we about to have a um, a oak moon. Oh shit, we about to have a oak moon. Have you ever had a personal experience with a shapeshifter? What? Every day. Every day. My enemies have shape shifted into family. My karmic lessons have shape shifted into friends. The same devils that probably wanted to keep me silent in other lifetimes have shifted into other content creators. I don't know if y'all heard that, but so the moon that we're having um, in December is called the Oat Moon. It says completion, rebirth, reflection, personal goals, renewal. Because the next the next one we have in January, which I think it'll be in it might be in Cancer. But it says, it says, work with inner power, assess your path, deepening protection and quiet. Something about this oak moon to that wolf moon is going to cause a shape shifting. Sh it's going to be shape shifting. No, I heard it. The full moon is on Tuesday. The oak moon is on Tuesday. Because we just... The last full moon that we had in November, I don't know if it was a full moon in Taurus or not, but the last full moon says remembrance, self-reflection, self divination, visualization. That was when a lot of you guys like, um, what, 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 what did I say at that full moon? What did I say at that full moon? Remembering who you are? Was that one of the things I said at that last full moon? Because it was an eclipse. And we talked about the 10th house back then. I think I talked about the 10th. Yeah, we talked about the 10th house after that moon that we had. I remember that. I do 